Is it over? Can it be over already? Does the shooting star just turn out to be a comet that kills them all? Today I'm going to be reacting to the movie Princess Switch 3, the third movie in the Princess Switch franchise, and in this third movie it stars Vanessa Hudgens, Vanessa Hudgens, and Vanessa Hudgens. I watched the first Princess Switch movie a long time ago, I barely remember anything from it, never watched the sequel either, and I didn't think I would make a video reacting to the third movie, but based on my reaction to Love Hard, it seems like you really like it whenever I react to these holiday movies coming out on Netflix. So we're just gonna keep on continuing the trend. Let's see how many brain cells I lose. Let's see when will be my limit. I want to see how close I can get to a mental breakdown on this channel. The third movie came out. I know nothing about it other than it is another switching lives kind of plot, except it's with the cousin of the princess character. She's the blonde one that appeared in the second movie that I never watched. Normally, I would prefer to watch movies movies in order so that I am better informed with the lore, but I think with this kind of franchise, it probably doesn't matter how much context I actually get. So we're just gonna go ahead and jump into this blind. If you're looking for better entertainment during your holiday break though, might I point you the way to Audible? It's definitely not because it's a sponsor of this video or anything. Okay, contractually speaking, I have to say it is. Audible is the world's biggest source of spoken word entertainment. They have the largest selection of audiobooks ranging from new bestsellers and new releases to original entertainment and even celebrity podcasts. Each month that you're signed up for Audible, you get a credit that you can spend on any audiobook in their collection, and you can keep your credits for up to a year. You'll also get access to the Plus Catalog, which has thousands of audiobooks and original content and guided meditation and tons more. I always listen to audiobooks whenever I multitask, like when I'm cooking. So I'm currently reading The Song of Achilles. The narrator does a fantastic job, and because the book is so dense, I feel like it would have been way harder for me to read it physically but because I can listen to it on audio, I know that I'll be able to finish it thanks to the narration. You can get free 30 days of Audible at my link, audible.com slash readwithcindy, or by texting readwithcindy to 500-500. Once again, that's audible.com slash readwithcindy, or text readwithcindy to 500-500. And now, let's go ahead and see what these silly little bitches are switching up these days. Once upon a time, there was a baker from Chicago who looks just like Margaret, the Duchess of Montanaro. Stacy. Me again. Married the handsome Prince Edward at Christmas. Oh, see, I didn't even need to rewatch the first movie or watch the second movie. They're catching me up already. While Margaret married my adorable best friend, Kevin. I remember liking that best friend. I thought he was cute. The other guy was kind of like vanilla and forgettable to me. Is her cousin Fiona, who looks like both of us, impersonated her in an attempt to steal the throne. Honestly, kind of a girl boss move. I thought she should go to jail, but Margaret says she's family. Oh no, Margaret's the kind of person who just keeps family around no matter how toxic they are. Mm -mm. She ain't gonna have a good time on the holidays. She's one of those people who just willingly puts herself into situations of suffering every holiday. I don't care if you're family, if you're toxic, I'm cutting you off. I really don't care. The Vatican has loaned us the Star of Peace. The star will be kept under guard until it goes on top of a ginormous tree at our tree lighting ceremony on Christmas Eve. My guess is the star is gonna get stolen by the main girl of this movie, or she has to retrieve the star now that it's been stolen, and it'll be like her redemption arc. Zuko from Avatar is quaking because now Vanessa Hudgens in a blonde wig is here to serve. Why does the Star of Peace look like a Pokemon? No one's getting paid a dime. It all goes to charity. What does he look like he's trapped in another Get Out sequel? Blink twice if you need help, sir. Hey, Liv. Merry Christmas. We miss you, darling. I love the Ballet Academy, but they make you work really hard on the school part. Oh, does he have a kid? How convenient. They sent the kid away to Ballet Academy so they wouldn't have to deal with her. <laughs> Get the kids out of the picture. I'll keep us posted. I love you. I love you more. I'll sleep better once I know she's here. Yeah, that's a good line to say, to make it seem like you give a shit about the stepkid. I see you, Vanessa. Maybe we put them after the yodeler? Do we really need a yodeler? Well, we don't want to offend the Swiss ambassador. 
We don't want to offend anyone. Me talking to a council before I send out any tweet on Twitter nowadays. The guards were drugged. We found traces of chloromethazine in the ventilation system that services the security office. Whoever did this was more prepared than the crows from the Shadow and Bone series. Why were they able to pull off a heist better than the crows ever did? What we need is someone with information that the police don't have. And it wouldn't hurt if they were just a little bit crooked. We need a person who actually thinks like a criminal who has a history of never considering consequences and has absolutely no fear of breaking the rules. Um, is this Suicide Squad? Princess Switch Edition? Is this gonna turn into a heist movie? Man, I really tunes in at the right time. No worries, Royal Six Pack. Her outfit is so camp. I'm into it. Ooh, I like his outfit too. Meow. Meow to you as well. Oh my god, not her being a furry. Not Fiona being a fur mother. You're looking well, Peter. You too, Pemmy. It's Pembroke. You'll always be Pemmy to me. Ooh. I am intrigued by this racially ambiguous, possibly half Asian man who clearly has a history with her. Hmm. So he's what, a hacker? Basically, he's gonna do all of the useful work in the movie. Why couldn't the main characters have come to him instead if he's able to get all of this information? The interesting bit is that chloromethazine was used to drug the guards. There are security cameras all along the riverbank. I searched through the last three days of footage and came up with this. That's Itai Kraus. He's doing a better job than the police. I mean, what else is new though? Hmm, him and that turtleneck. It got me thinking. It truly got me thinking. Wow, out of every Vanessa Hudgens, this third one definitely has the best love interest so far. I'm waiting for them to just continue adding more Vanessa Hudgens with every movie though. Maybe if they add enough, they can be like a proper heist movie, like Ocean's 8. Aren't you the Peter Maxwell who worked for Interpol and was charged with a rather large scale diamond theft? The charges were dismissed, but the incident tarnished my reputation. So I resigned and started my own private security Firm, which has proven quite lucrative. Oh my god, not him being a bad boy. I find this man intriguing. Also, why is he way more useful than Kaz Brecker from the Shadow and Bone show? Can we please talk about plan B? Thank God there's a plan B. Peter always has a plan B. Peter has a plan B. Yeah, he does. Let's just say you'll never get accidentally pregnant. He's pro-choice, baby. There is no smudge on her cheek at all. The leave is right there. I like how this movie just makes these two characters like each other for no reason. Like at this point, they're not even trying anymore. They're just like, yeah, it's a boy and it's a girl. They like each other. Why? Heterosexuality. If they're both good looking, it just makes sense. Absolutely. Let's make some merry, shall we? What on earth are you doing here? Well, age before beauty. I like how Vanessa Hudgens delivers every single line in the exact same way. What on earth are you doing here? Oh, age before beauty. Like the inflection is the exact same every single time. There's no variety whatsoever. She's just trying to get an easy check from this movie. And you know what? I would do the same thing. Whatever happened to that dreary little rodent that you were seeing when we met? Not him calling Peter a rodent is giving me racism. I predict Peter will get increasingly jealous during the movie. Like he's here for a mission, but then his feelings will conflict. You're jealous. Do you want me to be jealous? <laughs> Maybe. Because being jealous would mean there's something between us. <gasps> Is there any chemistry between these two? No. Does it still make me want to be in a flirtationship with someone? Yes. Every time there's like a bitch character in a movie and they try to expand her character a little bit more, her background story is always that she has a neglectful mom and that's why she's such a bitch now. This is how it goes in every story. The main character who has no personality never has a mom because the mom died when she was young. The bitch character who later tries to have a redemption arc has a neglectful mom. I don't know why sociologists haven't talked about this. There's a clear correlation here. Why would she leave me all alone at Christmas? I'm here and we'll always be friends. Why is this also giving the childhood friends to lovers like Shadow and Bone? Why is this walking an extra mile more than Shadow and Bone ever did? See that up there? Just look up at the North Star and you'll never be alone because wherever I am, you know I'll be looking up at it too. That is such a cheesy line. And you know what? <laughs> I said something similar to my own flirtation ship. <laughs> and it worked too. 
<laughs> the girlies will eat it up. There is an appeal though to the bitchy character having a childhood friends and lovers kind of romance because it just goes to show that there was someone that had always been there for her and like knows all facets of her and still loves her regardless. Like he knows her more than just her snobby facade. Not that I'm implying Vanessa Hudgens has any character depth, but I'm saying the idea of it. <laughs> I understand what they're trying to do and I understand the appeal. Watch and learn. Is she actually going through laser security or is she just doing yoga? You know they're turned on right now. You know they want to do it right in between this laser maze. Aw, this is so cute. Now this makes me want to go on a winter wonderland date too. Ugh, damn my hopeless romantic heart. It's quite all right to admit you have feelings for other people. Mm-hmm. That's some projection I see. It's okay to admit that you have feelings. You're determined to smother us in holiday cheese, aren't you? Yeah, he about to smother you with that dick. I'm sorry, I know that this is a family-friendly movie. I will cool my thirst. Now kiss. <gasps> They're gonna get interrupted. Yep. Knew it, that's what it happens. Oh my god, that's a cute shot. It's off center though. Even the director didn't give a shit about putting together this movie. <laughs> Dude, he's definitely the hottest out of all the love interests in this entire franchise. He's gonna scale a fucking building. What else can he scale though? <coughs> okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, it's just that this movie is so vanilla. I'm trying to spice it up more. It stands to reason that Her Majesty could impersonate Miss Pembroke. Maggie could never pull it off. Why not? Not to be unkind, Moo, but you I certainly don't have the, uh... Je ne sais quoi. She's saying you're a basic bitch. You got no personality. This is the basic translation. No, arch your back. Girl, how do you not know how to arch your back? It's giving me scoliosis. Has it ever occurred to you that every time you start to feel something for someone, you pull away? You didn't leave because you had feelings for Hunter. You left because you had feelings for me and it scared you. Honey, that's called a trauma response. Maybe some of us are scared to have feelings, damn it. I get you, girl. But that's on her to work in therapy. What I really think is that you're so hurt by what happened to you when we were kids. You're terrified of letting anyone in. You've always got a plane to catch or somewhere to be just like your mom. Oh my god, not him reading her like a fucking therapist. He's like, let me tell you what's wrong psychologically with you. It's the abandonment issues for me. I'm telling you, every bitchy character boils it down to the mommy issues. But then if you were to look at the background story of the mean mommy, she would probably also have mommy issues. And then the list continues on and on. So who's really at fault here? The biggest mommy? The original mommy? We have to get Fiona back to to St. Michael's by seven, or she and Mother Superior are headed to the big house. Well, maybe. No, 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 no. This entire movie is just one giant identity crisis for Vanessa Hudgens. Remember when this was supposed to be a romance Christmas movie? When did it become like some kind of weird Spy Kids Suicide Squad mission movie instead? Well, there's no need to take that tone. The biggest far-fetched thing of this entire hacking sequence is that she's able to even move the mouse with her glove. See, now this is giving me Bridgerton. This movie is just a conglomeration of several movies all at once. And yet, it somehow does it better than the rest. I'm not sure how I feel about getting Fiona off the hook. You know, it's deliciously exhilarating, engaging in all this you know, skullduggery. Oh. <laughs> oh god, not him having a roleplay kink. Stupid. How would pressing your finger be the same weight as the star piece? The way that would literally not even work, but all right. Stay here. Oh, but, but. <gasps> not her cheating on her boyfriend. Hmm, I wonder if there's gonna be a scandal. Let's get the hell out of here. Miss Pembroke is not here. It's everyone for themselves. Why did he ditch her? You literally had one job and you ditched her. Thank God. He could have just waited for her, like literally a few seconds. That would give me major trust issues. If you're not reliable on a heist like that and you are so close to leaving me behind, I would definitely hold the grudge. Also, when he came back, he could have just ran over those other security guards. They also should have brought weapons just in case. Not me condoning violence, but listen, a heist is a heist. You gotta do what you gotta do. How the fuck? 
fuck did he drop his business card there? Peter had to stay behind to create a diversion. But he was able to escape. Well, we still haven't heard from him, so... Did you get the star? Well, of course we did. <gasps> Peter took the star? Good for him, dude. Major respect. He fooled every one of us into thinking we could trust him. After everything we went through, I can't believe it. Don't hate the player, hate the game. I respect Peter for betraying them all. What benefit did they serve him? It's not like their friendships were that strong. So yeah, fuck loyalty. We're back, Mary Queen. Stacy? Yeah. And that's Margaret. Let me prove it to you. I feel like this movie just forces kisses because every few minutes they're like, oh wait, this is supposed to be a romance movie. Okay, here's a quick smooch. Now let's go back to the heist. Where's the star? I needed to get your attention. Wait, he did all that to get her attention? Come on, dude. Never mind, he's lame again. I would have had more respect if he betrayed them all and he took the star to sell it on his own. I want the star. And you'll get it. But in exchange, I need you to pop around to the dining hall. What on earth for? She wants to talk to you. He did that so she could reconcile with her mom? That's lame. I also feel like that's crossing boundaries because not everyone needs to reconcile with their family. If they have cut family off, you should respect those boundaries and not try to force your way into it because you don't actually know what the relationship is like. How dare you tell me what to do? Someone has to or you'll just go on living an empty hollow life. How does she have an empty hollow life. First of all, she's had the best outfits throughout the entire movie. She's had more personality than all the other bitches. I think she's doing pretty well for herself. I know I said I'd always be there for you, Pemmy, but this is the end of the line for us. That's a relief. Here we go with the unnecessary breakup. At least her coat is cute. I love fur coats. But it was on a retreat at an ashram in Rishikesh that I finally realized that there has been a void in my life, something missing. And it's my daughter. I love you more than anything or anyone I always have. She's not obligated to forgive her mom though. Like if her mom was neglectful and it really affected her that badly, she doesn't have to try to build a relationship with the mom now that the mom has changed her mind. You're here to make excuses. There's no excuse for what I did. You're damned right there isn't. Period. I say kill her with the spikes of that star and then run away and sell that shit. I've carried this around for years. To remember. Oh god, here we go. Y'all need to just go to therapy and talk about this with some relationship counselor. I don't want to see this shit. It's too late. I mean, what do you expect? Like, I know you probably love your daughter, but if you all of a sudden change your mind now, it's kind of unfair to just expect her to quickly forgive you. Why is it that the relationship is only gonna be good whenever you feel like it? You know what I mean? I don't know, I don't really care for her tears. I support blonde Vanessa Hutchins just being a bad bitch. Hey, we've got a plane to catch. What, is she gonna run back to her mom? Come on, dude. That was quick. You got over it really quickly. That was literally so fast. I thought there was gonna be like more time before we get to the reconciliation. Girl, you process things so fast. That was like 50 therapy sessions in the span of one minute. All of a sudden, you've now found your healing. Couldn't be me. Feeling a little bit queasy. Why do you feel queasy? You said like only five lines in this movie. You're basically like a minor character at this point. You can't feel sick if you didn't say anything or do anything in the entire movie. You didn't tell me what happened to Hunter Kennard. Uh, the police arrested him last night trying to flee the country. I gave them the diamond bracelet as well. Did he happen to keep those red heels? Kevin. Oh my God, not him also having a role play kink. How come none of the other Vanessa Hudgens are offended that their man seems to get turned on when they dress up as that random cousin? Kinda sus. Also, is she never gonna tell him that she kissed a dude? I mean, she had to for the mission, but wouldn't you tell your significant other about it? Like just mention it happened so that it doesn't seem suspicious that you were hiding it? Kind of sauce. You know, this is the best Christmas I have ever had. It's because I had my beautiful daughter back. I mean, you could have had a good time if you had just been a good mom in the first place. Why are we acting like this is suddenly happening out of coincidence when it could have happened much earlier? I don't know, I just don't think I'm as forgiving as these characters. Maybe that's why I'm not meant to be a protagonist. I was mad at you, Pemmy, because you didn't care about me as much as I cared about you. And that's not a good reason to be mad at someone, so. 
Wow, we love the emotional maturity. I don't think you can fault someone for not caring for you as much as you care for them, because it's not like they can help it. But at the same time, it's also fair for you to draw boundaries as well if you realize that you want more. But they were on the same page anyway, so this conflict literally had no point to it. Ugh. Is it over? Can it be over already? Does the shooting star just turn out to be a comet that kills them all? I like how this credit scene is trying to make it seem like these are actors that are having a silly goofy time behind the scenes. But you can tell it's all very much forced. Just like how I pretend to have a good time while watching these movies too. <laughs> this is so fun. I'm definitely not doing this for a check. Well, that was a movie. Will there be a Princess Switch 4? Will they just keep on multiplying like freaks? I feel like if I were the creator of this franchise and I just wanted easy money and I didn't give a shit, every Princess Switch movie, there would be another princess to add to Switch, but each movie would have a different genre. So like this one was like a heist movie. The next one could be like a Western film or something. There's like a shootout with cowboys and then there's cowgirl Vanessa Hudgens and they're about to shoot each other, but it turns out that they did the switcheroo once again. I feel like you could have fun with it because once you stop giving a shit, that's when you can just mess around and have fun. That's what this channel is about, basically. Well, thanks for watching along with me. It's nice to waste time together. If you would like to stop wasting time, go ahead and unsubscribe from my channel. And goodbye.